and welcome back to Toby's Viscous with Toby. It's me. In today's video, we will look at the Lithova or Litova lithium iron phosphate battery. And this battery is a 100 amp hour battery, 12 volt. This battery states as a Group 27 size battery. It's the model LVP 12V100BL. It does come, which is pretty cool, with Bluetooth. It's just below $300 on Amazon, $299 as much as I remember. It does state it's designed in USA. That's the website, lithover.com. I hope I pronounced it correct. If not, please correct me. It does come with a couple of information here. Cautions, do not. What's missing? It's specification. So I got this little sheet, this PDF sent over with all the specification in here. I marked a couple of things which I thought are pretty interesting or not aligning what I was a little bit confused about. So let's go over this a little bit. So first off, it does say here upper right, it has a communication port. I do not see any communication port. What just, it comes with just a cardboard box, plastic wrap, I took it out. That's it. There was no manual, no instructions, nothing. What it does come with is with those little, you know, hoodies, caps, whatever you want to call them, rubber boots. And then it comes also with a washer, spring washer, and also the bolt itself. And there is not a lot more, as you can see, which is not a problem. As mentioned, I got my specification sheet here. So two things which are very interesting and I want to talk about before we do a capacity test, before we disassemble it and see what's inside and if it's true. It should come with a low temperature and a high temperature cutoff function. And here's an interesting part, but it should be noted that we do not have low temperature charging cutoff function, only the discharging low temperature cutoff. The temperature range is between uh, minus 20 to 55 Celsius, and a high temperature cutoff temperature is above 65. So, well, we'll test it and see if it actually works. But first of all, before we destroy it, <laughs> sorry, take it apart and hopefully not destroy it, before we take it apart, we'll do a capacity test. Let me introduce you to the test setup. Here we can see the smart chant. I'm using a one phone. Perfect, I hope you can see it. So we have one thing which is amazing here. Let me open the, bed, the app. And then I can connect to smart bed. And then it does give us information about the battery which is pretty awesome. And you can see the capacity, total capacity, 109.3 amp hour. I'm really curious if this aligns with the test we're doing here. Um, there's a draw at the moment. That's why we have to start immediately. But um, that's from the shunt, 14.43. Um, there's a difference, it looks like, between the shunt, when measures, and uh, the fuse and everything else is connected in there. There's not more information, that's all. I didn't see anything else. When you go to cell, you can see usually all four cells. It looks like there are four, five cells. Um, sometimes there are five, sometimes four. So I'm curious what that actually means when we open it up. But that's something after the capacity test. So we'll start with this one first. Do capacity test and then we'll continue. But I wanted to show the app. All right, let's, let's get started with the test. I would say 21.7 amp. That's pretty decent. Gets pretty close to the 0.2 C test we want to do. 22 amp. We'll let it run and I'll get back later.
look at that. Yeah, nice. Just past the 101. It's above 101. It's just slightly past the 100 amp hours. So, looks like this is a successful test. Great. Even though it's slightly, but it looks pretty good. It's pretty nice when the battery passes the capacity test. I tried to show you already the app earlier, what it does look like before the capacity test. I would say we'll take a look now at the app, what it does say about the battery. And again, at this price point, having Bluetooth built in, I think that's pretty good, even better. But, you know, those days the prices are going down and up and up and down. And uh, sometimes I just watched a video from World 2 video and he was reviewing a battery and they apparently just put in maybe different cells, maybe different components, different BMS, you don't know. So it's really, what are they putting in actually? Regardless, let's look at the SmartBat Pro app. Connect to the SmartBat. And let's see, we should be pretty low. Yep, it's at 6%. So what was interesting, this app at the beginning said it has a capacity of 109 amp hour. Now it says it has a total capacity of 106.7 amp hour. I didn't fully charge it yet because I just want to, you know, take it apart first. Maybe less dangerous. But we only pulled 101 point something amp hours of capacity. So it's still above 100. It passes the test. Um, here you can see it's a third cycle in total. So let's see. Let's see what's in it. Hey guys, I have to show you this. This is incredible. Here we have it, the battery. And you might remember in the app you saw or saw not that it says four and then sometimes it says five cells. 4,000 milliamp, 3.2 volts. That was pretty cool. Let me, let me show you. Here, this is the battery. That's what, we, what I can see. And they are holding pretty good together with those bus bars, I guess, in here. Um, let me try to continue. So, one cool thing is, in terms of main maintaining, well, I had to cut it open. Um, yeah, maintaining is hard, it's clued in, but not as much as you would expect. But this battery actually has some weight to it, that's why. And those terminals, they are having, which is pretty neat, they're using bolts and washer and spring washer, and they have a crimp, a hydraulic crimp over here. They have, so it looks like here you can find on a negative one, 12 gauge wire, four of them, same over here, four of them, with a hydraulic crimp, crimp to the lock terminal ring over here, same on the other side. Kind of protected and clued together with, with this uh, foam here as well. Then we have a epoxy over here, so let me show you the BMS. Because the BMS is not as small as I would expect it. <laughs> here we have the BMS. It's definitely bigger than I thought. So we do have the Bluetooth module over here, pretty sure. We do have one, and most likely here on the other side as well, a second temperature sensor. So what you can do, they are holding in with screws over here. So I'll take it off. So we'll see if we can just flip it around and see where it's at. Maybe we can also take the epoxy yellow epoxy plate off and then we have more access and can see what's going on underneath. Okay, look at this. I'm try to keep it protected. So I can kind of lift it, but the temperature sensor is in the way, so we'll unplug. Uh, let me see, maybe I'll unplug this temperature sensor and we have more access over here. Cool. Which is pretty nice. Um, I don't know if you saw that. I did mention it. A handwritten something over here next to the Bluetooth module, obviously. So let's go over here and see if we can flip it. It's a temperature sensor. Here's another temperature sensor. And it looks like everything's holding in with this tape. Bottom. Oh yeah, that's good. Now we can see what's happening underneath. Oh, cool. I hope you can see it here. I took off the foam a little bit more. So they use this tape as well, which I will cut off a little bit. And you can see that this is welded to the battery bars, and this is a big bus bar, it looks like. Um, big connecting bus bar, made of copper. Take those plastic. Look at this. God, they're holding in the bolts. That is so hilarious. 
I like it. No, I like it. I haven't seen such a battery build in a long time. So this is really neat. It feels like everything's holding in those days just with glue. That's all. Bummer. Let's see. I don't know if you can see it here. Temperature sensor number one. It's also clued in here pretty well. Let me take it off. It was clued in here. And then we have one, two, one, two, three, four balance leaves. And we can see so interesting, I guess it's a pack of one, two, three, four somehow. And then we have here another temperature sensor, which I have to pull out on the, from the other side. Okay, so we have two temperature sensors. Let's see if there's any description on the board. RT1 and RT2. So here we have, on this side you can see the soldering. And the soldering is, you know, it's just soldered. So it doesn't look super awesome. So the soldering looks okay, but it's not super awesome. When I look here, especially you can see the wires, they're almost sticking together. Uh, you know, it, it, it does the job it looks like so far. But could be better, way better job. What I usually do is just putting glue on top as well, so it's really protected, but here's nothing on top. That's quite interesting. So this is the exposed area to the plastic cover. And that's all. So I would have assumed that they would put at least, you know, some clue spots as they always do everywhere. They didn't. Okay, cool. Let's proceed. So two temperature sensors, right and left. And they have a thick layer of glue. So I'll get the heat gun and I'll also get a power supply as well as some ice. So you have the bench power supply. So you can see there is some voltage going in right now. Yep, there it is going in. Six amp. So cool. Thought it means we have a charging functional environment right now let me use first one this one over here so you can always see when it drops or stops charging so here we go mm -hmm. nothing Look like anything is happening. Check the other one. Also nothing. Looks like in a moment. Okay. Huh? Nope. Nothing. All right. We'll test the heat. First one, I hope you can still see it. Up, and there it stopped. Let's cool it down really quick. And it's back up. Okay, let's test the second one. So it's charging again. Oh, and again, it just stopped. Okay, cool. So the heat is working. Let me cool it down again and see. It's coming back up, there it is again. What does it tell us? We have two heat cutoffs. Quite interesting. I'll test one more thing with the cold again. Let me see, I'm not mistaken here. I'm putting both in the bucket. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It did work when I had both in there. Okay, let, let me double check again with one individual one. That was interesting. Okay. Oop. One more time. Back charging. Sure is 
one has enough pressure, I guess. Interesting. No, oh, this it's still charging. Okay. And I'll do both at the same time again. You can see it here. Oh, look at that, guys. Quite interesting. Okay. It even has a Bluetooth and it's less than $300. It does not have prismatic cells, but it also does not have pouch cells. It comes with those, it looks like those are the cells um, which they mention also in the specification sheet. So that's good at least. It's also good to see, as mentioned, um, it says UL certified, just the ETL certificate or the Intertech sign at least. There were more information about iron, lithium iron phosphate battery. But yeah, I think at this price point, this is amazing that you have Bluetooth and you have high temp and low temp charging cutoff, which protects lithium ion phosphate cells. Even though there are way more cells than you would expect, um, this one might be a little heavier than other ones. Right now it's displaying this one, which seemed to be more normal to me for cells or in a 4S configuration. And it's quite nice and uh, you can see the cells. Oh, there it is again. So there's number five, real time. All right, good, taking it back. Don't know why number five is there. You saw it, it just appeared. All the information um, with Bluetooth, a very basic Bluetooth. I think there's another app which just said you might be able to use. I didn't, I only installed this app so far. But yeah, let me know what you think about this. Um, would you buy those cells those days or would you rather go with a battery which has prismatic cells or pouch cells? At this price point, Bluetooth, high and low temp cutoff. What do you think? Okay, so I tried to put it back together. Um, so far it works pretty well, don't over tighten anything, have everything connected. I'll charge it back up later, I'll just test it on my end again a couple more times, want to see if it does hold. And if there's any update to it, I will let you know of course. But for now I feel like it's, it's a solid unit, so it's good build quality except what I would like to see improved are those soldering points, which I think they could have done a way better job. Let me try to zoom in a little bit again so you can see it, what I mean. So when you look at those ones, you really, they could have done a way better job on this one. As mentioned, um, we all like to see a very good craftsmanship those days for a little money, but still, um, I think it will hold because this one is in a very tight case, except actually this one is just leaning on, the lid is just leaning on top. And when it's maybe too hot or something, batteries overheating or not, it might happen as those soldering points might just come loose and then you're not capable of using a battery anymore. That would be a huge bummer. So this little improvement is something less than 300 bucks with Bluetooth and high and low temperature cutoffs. So that's amazing. Okay, there's one more test we have to do. And according to the specification sheet, it does say it has a peak discharge current from 300 amp for three seconds and the maximum continuous current is 100 amp hours so i do not have an inverter which is putting out 3600 watts at once so i connected two um, that's why i have two positive wires up here one inverter is up to 2000 the other one is up to 1200 so i'm not getting to the 300 completely but at least I want to get over 100 amp and uh, we'll now give it a test and see how long it will last. The battery is not fully charged. Let me open the app for the battery. Smart bat. All right. And connect to it. 40% of charge at 42 amp hours. All right. So I'll turn on the inverters. All right, both inverters seem to be on. We have a, ch so there we go, one current already. All right, let's give it a try. See how far we can get. Two hundred amp. We already. Whoa. That was it. Yep, battery shut off. Let me get the inverters back up. Alrighty, first inverters back up. 
Let me see. Up. Yep, it's pulling. Let's get this one first. It's pulling more. Nice. 150, 160. It's already above 100. Which is a continuous charge, right? One, two, three. Okay. Up. Alrighty. There we are. 92. Dang, that's not enough. Yeah, it's a little short. Let me see if I can find the last 8 amps. <laughs> Still a little short. Okay. 96.7 amps. And that's continuous, so it shouldn't be a problem at all handling this load. And we can see here in the app it's at 96 amps, so that's pretty good, I would say. Pretty satisfying, kind of. Almost 100. All right, it's getting warm in here, right? I'm using heat guns to heat it up. So I think we'll stop it here, stop it here, we'll stop it there. Awesome. Max, uh, it says a peak discharge current would be 300 amps. We got it up to 200. So I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. I think it's enough. Thanks for watching this teardown. Thanks for watching the capacity test. What do you think about a Lithova battery? Let me know in the comments below. And if you would use a battery which comes at this price point, Bluetooth, high and low temp cutoffs, but with those cells, is that a problem for you? Is it, do you really care about it? As long as it's lithium iron phosphate batteries? Yeah, I'll keep going with this stuff. I love it. And now, of course, as always, if you wanna see stuff like that, like the video so I know you like that stuff. And as well, subscribe to the channel if you have not done that yet. Um, if you like that stuff as well, more stuff to come. Thanks for watching. Cheers.